Today I have with me Representative Scott Perry from Pennsylvania to go over some of the biggest stories in the news and help us better understand them from a congressman's point of view. Congressman, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank, thank you so much for the opportunity. It's great to be with you again. So um, earlier this week, uh, President Donald Trump said that former House Representative Liz Cheney should be jailed for destroying January 6 evidence that would exonerate him and be useful to other people. As uh, someone who the Democrats have pointed a finger at uh, regarding the January 6 Capitol breach, how do you feel about uh, Trump's words uh, and this, this J6 committee destroying this evidence? Well, first of all, the J6 committee isn't really a committee. Um, it's a group of uh, members of a star chamber picked because they had uh, decided what the conclusion would be before the trial began. So, so I never really call it, I call it the J6 so-called committee. It's not duly constituted. It doesn't comport with the rules of the House. And in my opinion, has no standing and no authority whatsoever. That having been said, um, it, I'm sure that the president is very frustrated uh, there's, I don't think there's any person in modern history that's been more persecuted publicly than, than Donald Trump, citizen Trump or President Trump for that matter. Uh, and, and when I say persecuted, I mean persecuted and unduly uh, without any evidence, with made up evidence, with just fabricated claims. And, uh, and I think it's probably very difficult on him personally, his family certainly his finances. So I think that uh, that's a, you know, an understandable response. But I also want to say this. I'm not sure Liz Cheney had any authority to handle evidence or to place it or displace it or to do, you know, dispose of it or whatever. I do, however, think that the chairman of the so-called committee did. And it is apparent that evidence has been mishandled at the least if not just outright destroyed. And in any other circumstance of a legal proceeding, somebody would be up on charges of obstruction of justice. And, and I think that there should be an investigation and whoever either allowed it or ordered it ought to be, um, ought to be criminally charged. And that might be a staff member that just felt like they were doing uh, their duty to the, you know, to the left, to the woke left mob or it might have been at the chairman's behest or some, or some staff director's behest. Somebody's responsible. Somebody did this. And whether it's out of negligence or whether it was uh, intentional, either way, it's against the law. This is evidence in criminal proceedings that might exonerate and it, it, people that might be exculpatory. And that's why it's so important. And, and, and so I think that that's where this sh the Department of Justice ought to have an investigation at a minimum, of course, unfortunately, we don't trust the justice, the Department of Justice either. We don't think that they would have a, you know, a fair investigation. As a matter of fact, th they might be part of the destruction of the evidence. Oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah, you're you're right. They they might actually have fingerprints involved in right, case. right. They're not they're not going to touch it with a ten foot pole. Um, yeah. Speaking of uh, evidence and and uh, investigations, Hunter Biden is scheduled to publicly testify before Congress. Uh, he, he hasn't shown up for things in the past. The last yeah. time he came in with a, a group of lawyers, he looked like a mob boss on TV. He refused to answer any questions, even though uh, everybody was you know right there in the room. And now he's publicly saying, wait a minute, if I have to come in and do this publicly and with Tony Bobolinsky, who says that I'm guilty, I'm just not going to show up. Uh, but but then I read that uh, House Speaker Mike Johnson is saying we might have to possibly hold him accountable. What what could happen if the president's son, who is under investigation on whether he committed fraud or crimes with foreign entities, what happens if he doesn't show up for his uh, subpoena? Because Peter Navarro of the Trump administration, yeah. he's he's about to be jailed right now. Right. He's about ready to go to jail. Well, uh, unfortunately, and that, that is unfortunate. That's a whole separate subject. But um, we, you know, Hunter Biden is invited to the public testimony that he requested. Now, 
he didn't lay out provisions. I'll only come if no one, uh, if no one's mean to me, if no one calls me a liar, if no one says that I committed crimes. That's the only way. I, he just said, I want a public hearing. And so he's getting the opportunity to have a hearing. Now he's being invited. I don't know whether he's going to come or not. We're going to find out tomorrow, but we still have the ability to subpoena him. And, and if he doesn't bother showing tomorrow, I think he should be subpoenaed. If he fails to appear for that subpoena, then he should be treated just like uh, Peter Navarro or Steve Bannon or any of these other folks that, uh, uh, and, and the difference in this case, the difference would be that this is a duly constituted committee under the rules of the House of Representatives with the authorities so prescribed. So this is a, this is a different circumstance. What I think the people are going to see, and you mentioned it, I didn't, but uh, you said the mob, that he looked like he came in like a mob boss. Um, recent reports in Politico today that more of the Bidens uh, involved with people, what you're going to see, I think, tomorrow is, is that the only pe person that was uh, upstanding in this whole sordid affair is Tony Bobolinsky, who they never did a deal with uh, and, and eventually tried to swindle. He was the guy that was ask, actually asking questions. Is this legal? Is this ethical? Um, and, and I think that's probably why they didn't deal with him. What you're going to see is, is that the Biden family, including the now sitting president of the United States, associated themselves in many cases in their business dealings with people that either should have been in prison or are currently in prison so or are on their way to prison. So I think that that's going to be something that becomes strikingly evident. And and that's not a reflection on the investigation. That's a reflection on President Biden and his family and their business dealings. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. OK, um, just today, the Supreme Court ruled six to three that Texas can enforce their own law to arrest, uh, detain, deport illegal immigrants that enter their state boundaries. I know the Biden White House is throwing a fit about this. They're already lining up lawyers to to battle this why why is the white house working so hard to flood the country with illegal immigrants that are uh i mean there's there's just so much evidence that they are draining the taxpayer funded safety net programs hospitals uh food pantry like on and on and on uh but i i, I i'm so on the one hand i'm grateful that uh the supreme court said you know texas does have the right to uphold their own law on the other hand, I'm just so stumped at why President Biden want, wants to flood the country with illegal immigrants. Well, I really don't know why you would be stumped if you understand the left. Uh, and if you listen to the rhetoric, Barack Obama is the one that said he wanted to fundamentally transform America. Now, maybe other people didn't say, well, what's so wrong with America that we need to fundamentally transform it? And what, is it, what does that actually mean, fundamentally transform it? What it means is, is that this is all intentional. This is why they're throwing a fit, because they want this to happen. They, the plan is to flood the country with people here illegally. It's, it is part of, it's intentional. It's what they want to do. And now Texas looks like, at least according to the Supreme Court, has the ability to thwart that, which is what they don't, which is what the left, uh, the so-called Democrats, and I say that because the Democrat Party that many people identify themselves with, it, the Democrat Party of, of Harry Truman and John F. Kennedy, that party no longer exists. This is a party in name only. It is the Socialist Party of America, and maybe further left-leaning than that. It remains to be seen exactly what they do with this enormous power that they keep coalescing, but, but they have no interest in the Constitution or the constitutional provisions of this country they see government in a very different way, and they want to tra transform America to be like other socialist countries at, around the globe. And this huge influx of people with no ties to America, with no ties to American values, uh, this is a, a perfect, very quick recipe. They don't want to, to, to uh, a recipe to make that happen, and they don't want any interruption in that. They want that to continue until, at such point, there's simply no way to turn back the tide. Yeah, I know uh, Brandon Johnson in Chicago and Mayor Eric Adams in New York, they have been so vocal about how awful and evil Greg <laughs> Abbott is 
for not just dealing with these illegals in, in Texas and in Arizona, but how dare you, you know, send them up to our, our neck of the woods and, and put that burden on us. And yet you watch, they're not going to praise the Supreme Court for giving Texas authority to block those people from coming into the interior of the United States. So, uh, you know, it's like they, they want to complain, but they also don't ever want to praise something that goes against their progressive narrative. Well, it's because, look, they, they, they know that their citizens, the people that elected them, are unhappy with the circumstances, but they don't want the circumstance to stop and they don't want to be blamed for it. What you also don't see them doing, in the, along with the things that you mentioned, is you don't see any of them, while they're complaining, revoke their sanctuary city or sanctuary state status and say, you people that are here illegally are no longer welcome uh, to come to our state, our community, our city, and, uh, and destroy the, the, you know, the neighborhoods that we have, taking the tax base, making it uh, unlivable from a safety perspective. Uh, making it unaffordable from an education perspective because we got to teach, you know, a hundred different languages. None of them are interested in changing any of that. They just don't want the blame for it. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, that that is a, a big concern I have. I have three children under the age of yeah. 16 and my 12-year-old, uh, I mentioned this on my show yesterday, my 12-year-old was saying to me how much she's struggling because she can't get any time or attention from the teacher because they're spending so much time speaking with the children that don't speak English, uh, right, whether right. they're Lebanese or Spanish or Chinese. Uh, and it is, it's, it's weighing on our education system. Um, let, me, let me switch gears with you. Uh, we've got this new hoax that the mainstream media is putting out saying that uh, Donald Trump is calling for violence if he loses, that they would like a bloodbath um, I've been able to show the receipts. Elon Musk has shown the receipts. I yeah. think probably every conservative channel has shown that he was obviously talking about the automobile industry. Yes. And yet you have see, you have uh, Nancy Pelosi going on uh, the news saying that Trump wants violence, that he's calling for a bloodbath. You even have the president of the United States saying, see, folks, Donald Trump wants another January 6th. Do these people think that we won't fact check them or do, are, are they just counting on the fact that Democrats believe what they say and don't look into whether there's any truth to their words? Well, they are counting on that. They know you're going to fact check, but they don't care. The Democrats have, and the left has never had any problem with hypocrisy and they don't have to worry about uh, being on both sides of an issue or just straight out bold faced lying to anyone because they know that they're going to have the vast propensity and majority of the media to cover their tracks and actually be their sounding board, essentially be the communications directors of the of the left and of the Democrat Party. So that's not a consideration uh, for them. They'll take his words. I mean, let's face it. These folks concocted a narrative that uh, that uh, President Trump colluded with Russia and Vladimir Putin to steal the election and then do worse things and impeach them over it. It was all completely made up and not one person has been held accountable. Meanwhile, the one guy that that uh, that talked about executive privilege that all them have talked about, including today in a hearing where I was, there's only one person that's going to jail. And it's Peter Navarro, who's, a you know, a, an elderly uh, statesman guy who, you know, worked in the Trump administration, not a harm to anybody. And uh, and he's the guy going to jail. None of them are going to jail. None of them expect to ever go to jail. Uh, new new polling data out today shows that Donald Trump has a double digit lead with independent voters over Joe Biden. Do you think Donald Trump actually has a shot at beating Biden in November? I absolutely do think that uh, that President Trump has a shot at uh, at beating President Biden. Uh, but I also think that the this is going to enrage the left and they're going to they're going to do things like we just talked about where they take his words completely out of context wrap it up into a commercial throw a bunch of violence remember they're not going to show any violence of the summer of love right where the left literally destroyed american cities and barricaded police and and buildings and set them on fire and held uh, united states courthouses under siege for 100 days created their own their own internal government inside of cities where lawlessness occurred 
Yeah, they're not going to talk about any of that stuff. They're going to paint Tre President Trump in the absolute worst light. They're going to lie boldface to the American people. And there's a certain amount of people that are just going to believe that because they're only watching those outlets. They're not watching your show, for instance. And so the Democrats know that and they're going to try and overwhelm uh, the audience with that kind of information. sow those seeds of doubt and see if they can they can't beat President Trump. Trump legitimately based on policy, but they feel they might be able to based on personality. And so that's what I think they're going to do. Okay. Interesting. Thank you so much. I know how busy you are. Congressman uh, Scott Perry, thank you so much for coming on. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Well, thank you so much for the opportunity. God bless you and your audience. Thank you.